Howard Ray is a 13-year veteran of the Army. He is medically retired as a sergeant. He is also a survivor of the 2009 uh, Major Hassan shooting at Fort Hood. So I want to welcome Howard Ray up here as our next speaker. Well, good morning, you gun nuts. How are y'all? All right, great. Well, as CJ mentioned, my name is Howard Ray. I spent 13 wonderful years in the United States Army protecting this country. And unfortunately, unfortunately, on November 5th, 2009, that nearly came to an end. And of course, we know that this terrorist attack did end the lives of 14 men and women, or 13 men and women, one unborn child, and 32 others were wounded that day. One of the things that I learned as a result of that day was to never be without your gun. See, I was in civilian clothes that day. I wasn't on Fort Hood at the beginning of the day, but I was scheduled to be there for an appointment, and that appointment is exactly what brought me to Fort Hood on November 5, 2009 at 1 o'clock. I walked into the room. I looked at my brothers in, com uh, brothers in arms, most of which were combat veterans. And I looked at them and I said, I love you. Just halfway joking, if any of you have been in the military, you know the kind of satire and humor that we get out of messing with each other. And what ultimately ended up happening is the group facilitator said, what, do you think something is going to happen to us? Man, if I'd only known. Now, moving forward, I was given an award for saving the lives of nine people that day. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you those nine lives should have been protected with their constitutional right to carry. That shouldn't have come down to one person or one individual to protect a certain group of people. See, our founders said that it was our right to carry. And unfortunately, draconian reg regulation, federal, regula federal, federal regulation, is what kept me from carrying that day. And I did have a shot on that terrorist, of which our, our president still refuses to call it, to terrorism. But I couldn't take that shot. All I could do was know that I had a lot of training and only one place to go. And that was away from that horrible place. Now, I stand before you today, not just to tell you about my story and how it affects so many families of our United States military, because we also know that another shooting took place, not a terroristic shooting, but an actual shooting took place April 2nd of this last year. And again, our men and women were put in harm's way. All I'm saying is, whether it's soldiers or whether it's civilians, it doesn't matter because it's affected both. It doesn't matter if it's federal or state. We should apply the same appropriate amount of pressure on our elected re representatives to make sure that they understand our constitutional rights. Now, what I'm not advocating for is that we violate people's private property rights. I'm not advocating that at all. And I don't think anybody else here is either. But what I am saying is that as we walk in the public, in those places, it should be all right, our constitutional right to carry as we see fit. And that's why I support House Bill 195, and I encourage each and every one of you to do what our founding fathers said, and that is to maintain liberty. Keep this republic, and I believe this is, this is one of the bills that helps make that happen. Thank you so much for your time, and may God bless you.